Hi there, Will here, and today another Q&A, or rather a Q&A part two, since it hasn't really been uh, that recent since I did the last one, and I figured it was about time six months later. Anywho, the way this is going to go is I ask people to ask me questions over on Instagram, and uh, I've written them down and will answer them here. The first one I didn't actually write down, but it is an important one to address, so uh, it is, why do you have such a monotonous voice? What is up guys, it's your boy, Willy Sheepskin. Mainly so that I don't come across like that, but uh, also because this is the way I talk when I talk to camera. I never really thought it would be the way that I'd speak, I kind of hoped it might be a bit more exciting, but it feels slightly uh, fake to pretend to be super excited to be speaking to a, a lens and a camera on a tripod. So I speak like this and uh, a decent amount of people enjoy it because I'm not trying to sound too excited about things that might not necessarily be exciting. And when very exciting things happen in videos, I do uh, cease to be monotonous. But here I am, sitting at my dining room table, being monotonous. Anyway, the first question that I have written down is from uh, a friend of mine from high school, who I got up to all sorts of uh, probably slightly illegal things with. And it is, tell us about your graffiti life. My graffiti life was a, a period of time when I was in high school where I wrote a bunch of graffiti all over the show, mainly in East Africa, but also in a, a bunch of places around South Africa, which is why I won't be showing you too many pictures of it. But uh, eventually, the amount of uh, graffiti that uh, I put on walls around uh, East Africa led to someone finding out who I was and uh, offering me a job as a muralist. So I ended up painting murals for companies like Jack Daniels when they launched uh, Tennessee Honey in East Africa and that sort of thing. And it was very fun to be a 16 year old and being paid to paint uh, on walls. <laughs> Second question, have you tried black and white darkroom printing? Yes, I do a whole bunch of black and white darkroom printing actually. And uh, I have a formal education in the darkroom from my university degree, studying photography at the University of the Arts in London. My black and white darkroom, which uh, I have set up in our laundry, is behind these cupboards, actually. Here are some videos if you'd like to watch me print some stuff. Number three, what's in your music playlist? I don't actually have a music playlist. I'm somewhat uh, ancient with regards to the way I listen to music, which is mainly on YouTube and then losing the song because it's in my history super far back and I didn't like it and then rediscovering it sometime later and I find that enjoyable. But today, specifically, I was listening to a bunch of house stuff because I was in the uh, color darkroom printing and I find uh, house to be quite good for that because there's nothing too uh, exciting that happens in a song and when you're standing in the pitch black dark it can be uh, a bit disconcerting when too many exciting things happen in the song. But yesterday, I was listening to some reggae, stuff like Ica Mouse. And the day before, I was on like a Memphis funk, P-H-O-N-K, funk trip, listening to a bunch of stuff. I don't know, I'll uh, have them written up here. My music taste is very eclectic. It all depends on uh, what I am uh, feeling in the moment or on the day. Mainly stuff that sort of kills the background noise and I can sort of focus to without too many lyrics a lot of the time. Number four. How did you start to get enough credibility as an artist to work for companies, etc.? I never really thought about making photographs as a way to gain credibility. I just uh, made a bunch of photographs and eventually people noticed them and started to reach out to me to make things. I, uh, I tried to avoid thinking of photographs too much as a uh, a way to make a living or aspiring to make photographs for people as like a main thing just because I feel like I'd get burnt out quite quickly if my goal was to do something that very often doesn't happen because branded work and photo jobs for companies uh, fall through all the time so I mainly try and focus on making photographs that I enjoy and uh, sometimes people reach out to me to make photos. The main thing is having a strong body of work though. It's not uh, really about credibility. If you've got a really good portfolio and you send it to someone, uh, if they happen to see it, then your portfolio will stand out. It's about the work more than anything really. Tips for sequencing photos in uh, a zine specifically. I haven't made a zine in a while, but for me, when I did make uh, zines a while ago, I included a lot of text and 
having a strong front image and a strong finishing image is uh, the tip that everyone always gives or it's a common tip at least and that's pretty much uh, the most important one in my eyes as well so long as the sequence of images as it follows makes sense in relation to the strong front image and strong back image the main thing is just sequencing them so that they tell a story whether that's through like interactions between different images or the way in which the images uh, follow each other on the page top tip actually for zines which is also quite a basic tip but think about the the way that a print or picture sits on the right hand page and what the image that follows directly after it is doing on the, the following page because if you turn a page the first thing you're going to see is the right hand page so if it's a picture that you want people to see immediately then you put it on the right hand page it's a picture that uh, you want people to sort of meander over to on the page and uh, maybe consequently spend a little bit more time looking at because they've had to work for it as opposed to it hitting them in the face then you put it on the left hand side also try and avoid double page spreads unless you've got like a ring bound zine where it doesn't crease in the middle because the worst thing in the world is a really really wonderful photograph that's like creased up in the middle and you can't see the whole thing for me at least i'd rather see a horizontal picture like this and there are pictures that it works for like it's not it's not like a rule that you can't have a double page spread obviously but if it's a double page spread and like your subject is sitting in the middle of the frame and they're all crushed up that's not very nice. Number six, worst picture you've ever taken. I don't really have anything uh, that comes to mind, to be honest. I try not to, to dwell on the bad pictures. Wouldn't really uh, be much good if I was dwelling on them. There was one big failure in a video though, in the slide video early on, where I took a picture and overexposed it quite heavily. And that was pretty terrible. But I mean, I don't really think about that sort of thing. I don't like to dwell on the bad ones or the good ones. I like to think about the ones that are yet to come. You know, that's what's uh, most exciting. Number seven, what do you do for money slash do you live off your photography work? I earn a living in the photography sphere, mainly through photo assisting and retouching. Those two main things are what like pay the bills and stuff, but uh, I do a bunch of stuff outside of that. I paint like murals on occasion privately for companies if they pay decently and uh, obviously photo jobs, but that's not really my focus at the moment, although I'm getting more into that again now. And uh, the buy me a coffee thing, it doesn't really contribute to the living so much because my buy me a coffee page sort of helps make the videos, but because the strain of uh, budget for video making is taking off of my general budget, it helps make a living in that way. So I'm not spending like retouching money on uh, videos a lot of the time. I mean, for more expensive things, it still like digs into the general budget a bit, but that's uh, not the worst thing in the world. What's your dream destination for a travel commission? I'd really like to go somewhere like really inaccessible in Africa. Actually, the best place is a mountain range called the Rwenzori Mountains in Rwanda, I think, or the Mountains of the Moon. And I'm pretty sure I read about them in like a kid's novel when I was like 11 years old and got obsessed with the idea of going to see them. And I haven't been able to. The main reason, outside of budget and life in general, is uh, because it's pretty war-torn out there and dangerous. But if I got a travel commission, then maybe it could be organized in a way that uh, I wouldn't have to worry too much about safety, you know? So then I'd want to go to the Ruinsori Mountains in Rwanda. Your favorite part of the photography process? That's an excellent question, because there's a, a whole bunch of stuff that goes into the process. I feel maybe I can break it down for you. <laughs> there's going to the lab, buying film, figuring out something that I want to photograph, or just going out with a camera, making a photograph, handing the film in, getting the film back, scanning it, retouching it, balancing color, doing all of that again, then finally having a picture and putting it, <laughs> putting it somewhere, or not putting it anywhere. But for me, out of that whole uh, palaver, my favorite bit is uh, making the photograph and it's not like the whole process of making the photograph because that can be quite uh, arduous and strenuous but the moment where you realize that there's a photograph to be made and uh, have to figure out how you're going to do it that's most exciting a lot of the time when it comes to actually making the photograph things get a bit strenuous and when you're using an rb which i am a lot of the time it's a very intense thing for me, like I'm sort of scrunched up around the camera and thinking very hard about the focus and refocusing like six times because it doesn't have the brightest viewfinder. But that moment 
where you realize there's something to photograph and you get to think about how you're going to photograph it. That's what I find uh, most exciting and is my favorite part. Number 10, frogs or lizards? Because I posted uh, a picture of a little lizard in my hand with uh, the Q&A question. Definitely lizards because I've spent enough time in places in the world where there are frogs uh, riveting all night that I don't want uh, too much to do with them. So lizards. Number 11, how come you don't shoot more black and white in uh, medium format? I shoot a decent amount of black and white in medium format. I pretty much always have like a RB back with a, a roll of black and white in it. I just like to take it uh, as an opportunity to shoot things more slowly than I would for like a video a lot of the time because if I'm shooting color, it's probably gonna be for a video and then I have to finish a roll in a week. Whereas uh, with black and white, I can shoot more slower paced and take photographs that I really, 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 really only want to take because the final destination for black and white medium format negatives is uh, my black and white darkroom. And if I'm gonna spend four hours working on a really nice print, then <laughs> I need to make sure that the, the negative is worthwhile, you know? But I do shoot it, I'm always shooting it, just slowly. Number 12, how do you make your models so comfortable during shoots? I mean, I'm shooting my friends a lot of the time, and if I'm not shooting my friends and they're a model, then I like to think of them as a, a friend. I kind of like to talk to everyone like they're my friend, to be honest, and that goes a long way towards making people comfortable and just making it clear that I'm only really there to make a, a good photograph and have a good time. That kind of gets you most of the way, I reckon. Alfredo Guri asks, how are you? I am excellent, Alfredo. How are you? I'm a bit busy at the moment, but that's not like a bad thing. I've spent uh, <laughs> a lot of time in my life wanting to be as busy as I am these days, so I'm grateful for that. Slightly stressful, but you know, you get what you ask for. Oh, this is a good question. Do you feel more artistically fulfilled after starting the channel, or is it a distraction? I definitely feel more artistically fulfilled than anything else, to be honest. In the beginning, it was like an excuse to get out and uh, make photographs and mess around with cameras that I owned. And uh, what it's become now sort of is like having a good time and sharing it with people. And I really enjoy the fact that there are folks who like live elsewhere in the world. And for example, we're in summer right now and I've been sharing some summery videos and people get to watch those and say it's like a bit of a release from the cold or that videos in general improve their life somewhat. The idea that uh, maybe even one person out there is like having a bad day and then they watch a video and the day improves slightly is uh, very encouraging and I find that fulfilling. Maybe that's not artistically fulfilling, but in terms of like artistic fulfillment, I always feel vaguely artistically fulfilled. Like I've got a baseline level of artistically fulfilled that stays uh, the same and fluctuates up or down either way, but that is the way it must be. One must be a suffering artist to continue making things that are <laughs> exciting. And suffering as in just, you know, being very cynical about my own work all the time. So the channel hasn't detracted from anything in any way, basically. Number 15, tattoo tour. Don't know how I'm gonna do this uh, in an invigorating way, but uh, I've got this one, which is a hand that I got from a famous tattooer when I took his portrait, which is cool. Well, this one, which is a knife that my dad gave me for my 18th birthday. And uh, I consequently broke and decided that I needed to memorialize it with uh, a tattoo. Nasturtiums, because my first memory is my mom showing me nasturtiums. A bee, because I made a photo of a bee last year and it was my favorite photo. And uh, also it was somewhat part of uh, me realizing that photography might be a, a, a valid profession because I sold some prints of it, which was exciting. Got a ship on my arm, which is a family related thing because we grew up on boats. And, uh, and uh, an owl on my arm over here because uh, my mom's name uh, is the same as that uh, owl from Harry Potter. And then two on my legs, which uh, are skulls with knives through them because I got them when I was 18 and 19 and uh, wanted skulls with knives on my legs. Number 16, what do you wish you were better at? Or in Dutch, oh boy, in Dutch, waar zou je beter in willen zijn? I'm making that up, by the way. I don't know if that's right. 
but in Afrikaans it would be waar zou jij beter in willen zijn and I'm pretty sure I was closer to Dutch than in Afrikaans but what do you wish you were better at and the answer is uh, drawing at the moment I really wish uh, I was better at drawing I used to do a lot of sketches in sketchbooks and like prep uh, photographic scenes in my mind and draw them out and sort of recreate them and I haven't done that in a while because I just haven't had the time but I'd still like to be better at it are you planning any photo projects a zine or book not currently we've got some ideas floating around now which is an improvement from the last time this question was uh, asked in the previous Q&A but uh, I'm not planning anything out at the moment I'm still just trying to make photographs I enjoy and see where it takes me number 18 go to nighttime film stock Portra 400. Don't need any extra ISO when you have a good tripod and a cable release, and uh, Portra has done me decently. Though I darkroom printed uh, some of the Cinestall stuff today, and it actually turned out decently, so maybe I'll shoot uh, some Cinestall again. That's not the print. Cinestall. Favorite weather conditions to shoot in? Weather conditions is a tricky one, because I mean, uh, last time, I think someone asked uh, what my favorite light was, and I said dawn light, and I reckon. Maybe like a hazy dawn, like you get this haze, probably smog actually here in Cape Town that uh, can last throughout the whole day and it makes the light super soft, even if it's midday and uh, midday is no good because of the angles, but soft light throughout the day because of the haze. And uh, in summer, I look forward to days like that and the light is really nice. So a hazy, maybe smoggy day, not like heavy smogs so that it impacts like the scene, but smoggy enough to diffuse the light slightly. How do you multitask pictures and video at the same time? I just let the, the picture take preference, to be honest. I had fun in the last video I did, the Nikonos one, because uh, I was shooting 35mm and I had too much to think about, so I let like the video camera inform some of the uh, ideas I had for pictures a bit, which was really uh, fun, and I hadn't had uh, a chance to play around with that before, mainly because I was using a new lens that my mate Ken lent me a Zeiss lens, which is why things are so sharp, but uh, I just go with the flow. The photos are always going to take uh, prevalence though. What did you study? I studied photography at the University of the Arts in London. Have you considered moving to digital, medium format? On days where I'm like dusting a super dusty scan or just not in the mood to send anything through the scanner, then I consider the idea of uh, moving to medium format digital, but I'm really into uh, the darkroom and <laughs> I have been for my uh, entire analog journey, I suppose, and there's no uh, real darkroom access with uh, digital medium format. So for now, not particularly keen, but there's a lot to be had with those medium format digital cameras. Like if I was shooting a job and they didn't want it shot on film, super commercial thing that I wouldn't want the darkroom print either, then I would very happily pick up uh, a Hasselblad or a phase one or a Fuji or something medium format digital. Favorite place you've lived so far? I used to think that uh, East Africa was my favorite place, but I mean, move, moving back here and uh, getting up to the things I get up to in life in Cape Town, I'm gonna have to say Cape Town is my favorite place I've lived so far at the moment. Everything's uh, quite wonderful around here with regards to the way I get to live my life. And whilst there's uh, some dodgy aspects to South Africa and the world at large, really. There's nowhere that's perfect. Uh, this is probably my favorite place to live at the moment. Maybe things will change. Number 24. How do you manage your expenses so you don't overspend on film slash cameras? I uh, freelance in photo jobs and stuff. And uh, as a freelancer, the way I learned to do things was to put everything in savings and then like pay myself a salary out of that. So uh, there's a very strict budget that uh, I really do try to stick to and I have been succeeding in sticking to for a while now, which is exciting. And uh, I just stick to the budget because if I don't, then uh, it becomes very painful having electricity, you know? So <laughs> I just stick to the budget. Number 25. What purpose does photography serve to you? Uh, photography is pretty much uh, the main thing I do in life. I sort of wake up and do something photography related and then continue doing something photography related throughout the day. And when I'm not doing photography related things, like going to the beach, I'm still uh, taking photos and living through my camera basically. I feel like that's pretty much what I do. Even though that's probably a cheesy way to put it, 
photography is pretty much the only thing I've had any interest in continually doing for like the last eight years, I think. So uh, photography is basically my purpose, I guess. And the final question, number 26. What pushes you when you struggle to find motivation for your photography? Because like I just mentioned, like photography and the way I go about life in general are like super interlinked. Struggling to find motivation in photography is like struggling to find motivation in uh, life in general. So when I'm struggling with motivation in life in general, I just try and take a, a bit of a step back from things briefly. Not too big a one, obviously, because running away from problems never solved anything. But like if I'm super stressed, then maybe I'll try and uh, go for a walk or think about something else in life. Just do something completely non-related to photography for a bit and then come back to it and things are fine. But also, I pretty much just uh, push through any hesitations I have about things or frustrations or struggles because doing anything besides that just leads to a, a downward spiral, I find. For me, and this is obviously different for everyone, but for me, taking a step back and then getting back to things in force and forcing myself to get through things is the way that uh, I manage it. But also, with regards like specifically to photography, I like to think of the way that I make photographs as having like two sides. There's like the medium format side where I'm super serious about things and I'll like zone in and focus on nailing focus every time and being like super perfect about stuff. And then there's 35 mil, which I still shoot fairly frequently for fun. And it gives me a break from the medium format side of things. And then I can get back into the medium format and uh, be refreshed and reinvigorated and excited to keep using it. You know, that's the way that uh, I go about it. Obviously, it doesn't need to be switching to 35mm. You could be shooting 35mm and switching to digital, or you could be shooting to 35mm and switching to playing video games. You know, that's just, for me, I like to feel like I'm continually accomplishing something in some way photographically and keeping the eye in. And uh, that involves always making photographs one way or another. But if it weren't stressful for me to be doing something non-photography related at this point, because I, I get stressed when I'm not doing like photo work these days, I uh, would probably go do video game things or something. But also like, I'm getting very into free diving and that is a really great way to forget about everything because you're holding your breath for ages and everything leaves your head besides the idea of oxygen when you're like 10 meters underwater hoping for a breath of air and I want to get more into that. I feel like it's a great way to sort of reevaluate one's position in life and worry about getting nipped by a great white shark. I think that's about uh, all we have time for today. <laughs> Thank you so much to everyone that asked questions and if I didn't manage to answer yours, I'm sorry and uh, hopefully in a future video I can answer it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week. And thank you so much, as always, to the people who contribute to the channel and uh, help me to continue going on adventures. There are many exciting things to come.